So, seeing as I've already done a top 10 on standard gauge British steam locomotives, maybe now's as good a time as any to do something on narrow gauge stuff. Each year on Steam Locos in Profile, we usually cover six standard gauge locomotives per year, and they then go onto a DVD for Christmas. Usually. But DVD bonus material often tends to be about something narrow gauge. For example, Volume 4 in 2018 had the Southern M7s, the Huns at Austerities, the Great Western 4200s, the LMS Cybert 2s and Jinties, and the BR Standard 4 Moguls. But the bonus material featured the Earl and the Countess on the Welsh Portland Landfire Railway, and the Baldwin 1012Ds. But which narrow gauge locos are my favourites? Just like my top 10 standard gauge British steam locomotives list, this list will be entirely opinion based, and if my favourites don't match your opinions, then that's totally fine. A lot of narrow gauge enthusiasts can be very passionate people over a small range of locos, but seeing as I try to review as much as I can, my philosophy usually tends to be, if it runs on steam, I'll take it, even though we can all still have our favourites. Now before we get into this list, I'd just like to clarify that I'm classing narrow gauge as anything smaller than standard gauge, but larger than 15 inch gauge, so the Romney and Ravenglass locos won't get a look in this time around. Furthermore, this doesn't reflect on my coverage if any of the class is featured, seeing as I haven't been able to cover everything just yet, no thanks to one thing or another. So with all that out of the way, this is my top 10 favourite types of narrow gauge British steam locomotive. Number 10. The Festiniog Double Fairleys. Designed in the 1860s to meet increasing demands on the Festiniog Railway, Robert Fairley's double-ended locomotives quickly became one of the railway's biggest selling points. Little Wonder was so successful that the railway's Boston Lodge Works ended up building subsequent Fairleys in 1879, 1886, 1979, 1992, and committed to building another in the late 2010s. Essentially being two locomotives back to back, they had more than twice the pulling power of an England, hence they're now a regular sight on Festiniog trains. I will say though, as lovely as they are, they do seem to make the job a bit effortless compared to other locos on the railway. The Fairleys are terrific machines, it's just that there are others which turn my head a little more for other reasons. Number 9. The K1 Garrett. What more could be said about this Garrett other than, without her, there'd be no other Garretts. She may not have the grunt and flexibility of the bigger NGG-16s, themselves impressive machines, but every design has to begin somewhere, and in this case, it started somewhere quite unique. Speaking of which, we move on to... Number 8. The Linton and Barnstable Manning Wardles. Any railway enthusiast has heard of the Linton and Barnstable, and subsequently, they will have heard of these engines. Unfortunately, none of them survived. There's ongoing belief that Lou survives, following her shipment to Brazil after the LMB closed, but so far, that's not been proven, and given the time that's passed, it's doubtful that she still exists. Subsequently, a new member of the type, LID, was built in preservation, entering service in 2010. Perhaps part of their appeal is the myth surrounding Lou, but perhaps the key to their appeal is the railway they were built for. A light railway that was taken from us all too soon, and thanks to preservationists, is not dead, but sleepeth. Number 7. The Vale of Rydal 262 Tanks. Without question, these are some of the most striking narrow gauge locomotives I've reviewed. They were built for the two-foot gauge line from Aberystwyth to Devil's Bridge, but they're nearly as wide as some standard gauge types, if not wider in some cases. These engines weigh around 25 tonnes each, so they're nearly as heavy as a Brighton Terrier, and their tractive effort is in the same league. They may not be the most eye-pleasing for some, but watching one of these snake their way along the Rydal is an underrated sight to behold, if not for me, then the millions of passengers who've travelled on the line since 1902. Number 
Number 6. The Festiniog George England 040s. Since 1863, these little engines have proven that commercial steam can work on such a small scale. The only power being available until then was horses. Four of these six engines have survived into preservation, with work on recreating Mountaineer in original form well underway at Boston Lodge. Although much rebuilt over more than one and a half centuries, Prince has hauled public service trains throughout more of the railway's history than many would care to imagine. They may not have the same strength and durability as the Fairleys, but they do seem a little bit more determined. That's what I like most about them. Number 5. The Isle of Man Bear Peacock 240 Tanks There's no other railway system like the Isle of Man, and at the root of passenger railways on the island was the three-foot gauge steam railway network, opened in stages from 1873. The design proved so good that it couldn't quite be copied, so when Sharp Stewart built similar 240 tanks in 1879 for the Manx Northern Railway, they weren't quite as good, ending up being scrapped in 1912 and 1923. These days, the small boiler variants may not be quite up to the same sort of workload that the medium boiler variants could handle, but thankfully, the majority of the Manx fleet, supplemented by the one-off Dubs 060 tank Caledonia, have held modern traction at arm's length on the island trains. They may not be everybody's cup of tea, but they're one of the few kinds of narrow-gauge locomotives in revenue-earning service. Number 4. The Talithlin Railway Numbers 1 and 2, Talithlin and Dolgoch. Yes, I know, this is kind of a cheat on first impressions as they're two different locos in the same slot, but they've both lived the same kind of lives. The two engines were built by Fletcher Jennings for the establishment of the Talithlin Railway Company in 1865. Built to the unusual gauge of 2 feet 3 inches and 1 thumb, these two little engines were the railway's only form of motive power until the 1950s. Since then, both engines have been extensively rebuilt and are now fit for decades to come. There may be debates surrounding their originality, as is often the case with any steam loco these days, but there's no denying their place as two of the pioneers in railway preservation. Number 3. The Bordnamona Barclay Well Tanks. On first impressions, they're just bog standard industrial tank engines. But to narrow gauge and Irish railway enthusiasts, they're three of the most unique steam locomotives you could find. Built to run on turf, which then failed to run in revenue earning service, bookmakers would have given you safe odds on these locos being broken up for scrap back in the 1950s. But you'd have lost your money in all three cases. Number three was privately preserved by Lord O'Neill. Number two went on to become the star attraction at the Strad Valley Woodlands Railway. And number one was rebuilt as Talithlin Railway number seven top rolled. They're quite unlikely survivors of narrow gauge railway preservation, but undoubtedly welcome survivors nonetheless. Number two. Russell on the Welsh Highland Railway. If I could sum this engine up in one word, I wouldn't because that's just stupid. And besides, there's more to this engine than meets the eye. Built initially for the stretch of line between Porth Maddock and Beth Gellert in Snowdonia, Russell has ended up working in Wales, the war effort, and Dorset. She's now the only surviving locomotive from the original Welsh Highland Railway, and has been lovingly cared for by the Welsh Highland 1964 company, later Welsh Highland Heritage Railway. She's ventured out a few times on the Festiniog and Welsh Highland Carnarvon railways in preserved years, but most of the time, she's been a jewel in the crown of Porth Maddox Railway heritage. A special engine in a special part of the world that many railway enthusiasts will always have time for. Now before we get to my number one, I'd just like to make a few honourable mentions which I still like, but didn't quite make the top ten. The Welsh Ball and Flanfire Bear Peacocks, the Earl and the Countess. They're delightful little locomotives with a fascinating history that charmed one of BR's district managers into storing them for preservation. The 
cursed you at tattoos. They're a tidy design which seem in their element in a quarry or a valley. There may be only two of the originals preserved and a third one built in 2005, but thanks to the Talathin Railway, everybody recognises them. The Groudal Glen Bagnalls. They may be the same gauge as the Vale of Rydal tanks, give or take a fraction of an inch, but at 6 foot 6 inches high, they're undoubtedly cute. The NGG-16 Garrets. Never assume that a narrow gauge loco can't be more powerful than a standard gauge one, because without these, the Welsh Highland Railway is one phoenix that wouldn't have risen from the ashes. OK, so with those out of the way, let's get back to the top of the list. And my number one favourite British narrow gauge engine is... The Quarry Huntlets. I know, they're not as impressive as the Fairleys or the Garrets or the Vale of Rydal tanks, or as powerful, or as unique. Indeed, there's more of these than there are any other narrow gauge type left. But they're plucky, powerful for their size, and above all, charming. In many ways, pluck, power and charm pretty much describes narrow gauge in general. Many people, rail fans included, tend to dismiss narrow gauge locomotives as toy trains, thinking that if they're not standard gauge, they're not real ones and therefore they just don't matter. But a two foot gauge quarry Hunslet still weighs around six tons, so it'll still knock you down if you don't get out of the way. What's more, like the austerity saddle tanks, themselves of Hunslet origin, they've proven quite adaptable. The numerous forms of Hunslet 040 saddle tanks were designed for two foot gauge systems around quarries and mines. But on railways like Barla Lake, Flanberis Lake, Statfold Barn, Launceston, the Teffy Valley and numerous other lines, they still regularly earn their keep with a very different form of cargo. There's a lot to be said for an understated loco which can be used across multiple places. They may be ubiquitous for some and generic for others, but at the end of the day, this is one design that narrow gauge circles wouldn't go without. The movement has generally survived without Baldwin 1012Ds and Bagnall 062s, but the Quarry Hunslets are arguably one of the best all-round narrow gauge designs. Hence, they're one of the most numerous preserved and undoubtedly my favourite British narrow gauge steam locomotive type. Did you enjoy the case for my favourites? Have you got any favourites of yours which aren't on this list? Or have you simply got time on your hands? Then please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like what you see and you'd like to see more from my channel, then please feel free to like and subscribe, share the video, check out the online store in the description with DVDs, downloads, clothes and mugs, or if you'd really like to, then please feel free to support Steam Locos in profile and gauge the issue on Patreon. I'm Chris Eden Green, and thank you very much for watching. Please stay safe and look after yourselves, but most important of all, don't ever stop being awesome, and I hope to see you again soon.